Let's start right at the beginning of play with the service action. Once the serve has occurred, but generally not before, immediately transition to the blocker side of the net and watch the play develop on the other side of the net, the offensive side. Do not follow the ball, only watch the players. As you watch the play develop from your position on the blocker side of the net, anticipate where the set will go. The players are giving you all the information you need to do this. If the developing play tells you the set is going to a back row player, make a point to be in position to see the attacker's feet. Depending on the net system, this might require a secondary transition. If not, remain stationary to ensure you have a clear view of the feet of the attacker and the play that occurs at the net. If the developing play has the libero setting the ball using finger action, make sure you see the location of the libero's feet while the ball is being set. Again, being stationary ensures you clearly see the location of the feet at the time of contact. In this clip, you see the libero on your left play the ball as it comes off a block by the opponent. As the second referee, you need to see this action even though the libero does not use finger action when contacting the ball. At the same time, you must be stationary at the net and ready for the net fall, which does occur. As mentioned on the previous slide, when the play is at the net, you must be in position and stationary on the blocker side of the net. Watch the blockers as they get into position to jump. Watch them leave the ground and watch them all the way up. Then watch them as they complete their blocking action and come back down and contact the ground. While you are watching the net on the blocker side of the net, you should also be aware of the attacker and any net contact that player might have. These are also your responsibility, although the first referee will certainly assist with net contact by the attacker. It is always good to discuss this with your partner before the match. Here you see a net by a player in red. If you are not stationary when this play occurs, it is very possible you might whistle a fault on the wrong player or miss the net contact entirely. When the players have all landed on the ground after the net play, your job there is not yet done. You must remain stationary in your position till the players have transitioned away from the net, meaning all of the players. This is when most penetration faults occur, so leaving the net early will cause you to miss this fault. You need to be aware of these possible penetration faults. On the setter who might have been very tight to the net and when pivoting to clear the net, crosses the center line into the opponent's court. On the attacker who had a lot of forward momentum while approaching the net to begin the attacking motion and now lands with a body part completely in the opponent's court. And on the blockers who are turning away from the net as they transition for the next play. Once all these players have cleared the area, it is now your turn to transition and start the process all over again. Here, the second referee is stationary while the play is at the net and correctly whistles the net fault on the team in black. He then moves to the side of the fault before signaling and indicating which player was at fault. Remember that not all net contact and centerline penetrations are faults, but seeing all of them means that you have made a decision on what to whistle and what not to whistle, not just that you missed something. The more you serve as a second referee in USAV matches, the more these skills and mechanics will become natural. Unfortunately, referees don't use them often during the season as we mostly serve as first referees during the long USAV season. Teamwork still takes practice, so during each tournament you referee, take one match, or at least one set, and be the second referee. Although this would be for no pay, it is essential to continue this practice so you are ready to excel in those late tournament and championship second referee assignments.